have a fun story time that I'm being led to share, and so I'm going to be sharing that. Um, I don't know why I'm being led to share it, but it came up in, I was just praying, and that's what flashed, and it was like something that had happened like a very long time ago and stuff, and so um, I want to share it, and I want to pass on a message along those lines that might help somebody. Now, this video, um, a little bit of a background, um, this video, I feel like this video is going to like speak to people that like grew up in like maybe like an African church setting, um, church setting in general, you'll understand the story and have better context or whatever. Um, but anybody, I keep saying, um, cause I'm a little nervous, sorry, <sighs> but, um, I'm not sure I'm, um, again, <laughs> So I'm not sure what spirit wants to pass across, right? But we'll get it. We'll get there. I pray that as you listen to the story, that you get out of it exactly what Holy Spirit wants you to get out of it, right? So it's not just like a useless video, okay? Because nobody got time for this, okay? So years ago, this was probably like in 2007, when I just gotten married, I literally was a newlywed, Okay and probably three to six months into our marriage and we went to visit a church and when we went to visit the church um after the sermon the pastor had made an altar call and i mean when i say we i mean me and my husband went to this church right um mind you i'm very well known in the town just because it was a smaller town and my dad was a minister and so a lot of the ministers knew who i was and um, this was an invited minister, so he didn't know who I was, right? So at, after the service or whatever, not after the service, but after the preaching when they did altar call, it was one of those sermons where like, you know, if you feel like you need prayers because something, I, I don't remember, honestly, I don't remember, but it was one of those ones where I came out for prayers, okay? And I think that I came out because I was always coming out for prayers. Always. I was that girl that was always coming out for prayers. Okay? I always felt like there was something wrong somewhere. With me, they, my, I wasn't spiritual enough. I wasn't good enough. I wasn't... Um, I didn't want to disappoint God. Like, I always had this thing where it was like... I didn't want to disappoint God. I didn't want to fail him. I didn't want to be out of his will. I didn't want, like, there was just always something, right? Like, whenever they would be like, okay, you know, confess your sins, you know, because, you know, if you're in an African setting, you got to confess your sins, okay? So, <laughs> whenever it was time to confess sins, like, I would be sitting there like, I haven't done anything wrong, but it was like, oh, sins of omission and commission and the things I can remember and the things I can't remember and the things that I might do that I don't remember and I haven't done yet. All these things, I was constantly in fear. So that kind of gives you a little, like, yeah, picture of, like, where I was at, right? Anyways, so I come out for prayers that day and... I, he, he lays hands on me and he's praying and I black out I black out I don't know how long I blacked out okay I don't know how long this I don't I don't I can't recall till today how long that was and this was in 2007 that this occurrence occurred okay um I remember coming back to consciousness and all I could hear was the guy saying don't think there's anything wrong with her but we're not sure but if there was something wrong with her she wouldn't be helping us try to deliver her like she like it was almost like when while they were praying I too was participating in the deliverance or what was supposed to be deliverance I was participating in it right and then I felt like the ministers were going back and forth now they're having this conversation with my husband and I'm slowly coming back to consciousness. You know when you're like laying down on the ground or whatever, maybe yeah, like I fell out in the spirit or something like that or whatever, and I'm on the ground or whatever, but I'm hearing this conversation. And automatically there's this like fear of now he's gonna think that there's something wrong with me. My husband, right? Anyways, so 
I get up or whatever and it's time to go home. And then while we're on the drive back, he grabs my hand and he's like, there's nothing wrong with you. Don't listen to those people. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. And like you would think that like that instance of love, of affirmation would do the job. But it didn't. <laughs> it didn't. I just kept feeling like, hmm. Now, my husband did such a fantastic job in the beginning of our marriage establishing prayer in our household. Like, we prayed. We prayed. And by we, I mean mostly him because I was just in a space of overwhelming fear. And I don't know how it came up. But it somehow came up, right? In this place overwhelmed by fear, overcome by fear, just overwhelmed. And so he had to double down even extra in prayer. Like I would wake up some days, it was like 4 a.m. He was blasting prayers. And you, there was no time that he wasn't praying, honestly, right? Um, I remember one time he got frustrated. He was like, you can pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Can't you pray for yourself? You know? And stuff. And... The reason he was saying that was because I was just literally being haunted by my own fears, my own imaginations, like constantly terrorizing me, right? I felt like I was being terrorized. But the story that I really want to focus on is that beginning portion of the story where I'm being prayed for and it's a deliverance type prayer where the praying insinuating something is off, right? Something is wrong with you. Something is you might be possessed or you might have a demon or something like that, right? That type of intensity. And I look back now and I'm looking at my husband and I now, 17 years, going on 17 years, oh, 17 years now. And if my husband wasn't who he was, I can only imagine the type of damage that that prayer what seemed to be innocent, right, could have done to our relationship. Because he could have easily gotten back to the car, not speak to me at all, and just feel like, I don't know what I married, I don't know who I married, I don't know what's wrong with her, and I don't want anything to do with it, okay? And I'm so grateful to God that God would personify himself in, in, in an earthly form that expresses itself as my husband. And he spoke life to me when I needed someone to speak life to me. And I was young in the faith. I would say I was young because I felt like in the African setting of what religion or what religion is, you're not really taught the word of God or your, who your, what, a, what your identity is, right? And going back to like my whole life, I felt like that's just an isolated incident. But I was always the person that was always being preyed on as if like there was something wrong with me, right? I'd be like, like they would call me out for prayers for silly things like, oh, they'd look around and they'd be like, if there was anybody that the devil would want to use, it would be her. <laughs> you know, and then now I'm being dragged out for prayers. There's kind of laying hands, they're shouting on me, all kinds of things, right? And so it was like a normal occurrence, but I didn't know that that normal occurrence set the tone for my relationship with God. It wasn't a good tone. It was a tone of an insignificance that would need such a supernatural being to really pull me out of that place. And God will use anything to get to you. Okay? You don't know. And I think ministers need to take more into account the word choices that they use, right? Because at this point, when I'm observing a lot of the things that happens in the church while praying or while preaching or whatever and stuff like that, a lot of ministers are practicing divination. And divination literally is anything that is not going to foster love or unity is divisive. And you're, that's not God. God is not the author of confusion. And so if you pray over me and you literally like surface 
chaos? I'm not sure about that prayer. And this is what, I mean, we've been, I've been talking to a lot of people lately and talking about testing the spirit, right? When the scriptures talked about testing spirits, and it has to attest that Jesus Christ is Lord. It's not necessarily like it's saying, oh, Jesus is Lord. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't have to say Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. It's the spirit of what Jesus Christ is, which is the Holy Spirit. But what does the Holy Spirit do? You have to ask yourself, what does the Holy Spirit bring? In the presence of God, there is liberty. And so if it's from spirit, there must be liberty. There must be freedom. There must be love, joy, and peace. This is evidence that the kingdom has showed up. And so if someone is talking to you and you don't feel freedom, you don't feel love, you don't feel peace, and you don't feel joy, reevaluate what you're listening to. Okay? And I want to say, I'm so grateful to God. So grateful to God for who I am today. And I don't know how that would have been possible without the people that God placed specifically to aid me in my journey. And one of those people, my husband, has been very instrumental in helping me uh, be confident in my identity in Christ, right? Um, I watch him and he is so confident. He's like, you could say whatever you want to say and it would not sway him at all. That's how confident he is in his relationship with God. And I felt like after that service that day, I was just swayed left, right. You're looking for validation. Like, okay, is there something wrong with me? Is there something? And this man is literally holding your hand and saying, nothing wrong with you. I wish I believed it then. Or I wish I believed it then. But I didn't. I did not believe it then. But I think getting in the word and really being saturated and grounded in the word of God, it will do something. It will start to remove all the crutters of all these belief systems that you believed and remove all the lies and it uproots all like these things that have been seeded and planted within you. And I'm so grateful for being grounded in the word. My parents did a fantastic job of really like dipping us in the thing called the word of God, right? You can read the word and it could be in you or you know it and it's not in operation necessarily, right? Because you have to be an active participant with what God says have to believe what 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 God says what God says about you you have to believe what God says about you you have to walk out with confidence and boldness what God has declared over you that's not something that someone else can come along and do for you right and belief is one of those things that like nothing really changes it's you having to walk that thing out right like we say okay salvation for example is the best example the day that you accepted Christ as your personal savior, nothing really changed. Yes, we say, oh, everything changed that day. It feels like something changed. You know why? Because you made a decision. And that decision initialized a belief. And because you have that belief now, it now activates this thing. And everything has to go in accordance with that new belief system that you came into agreement with that day. So in essence, you can say there was an awakening of a new belief system that you are now operating in. Anyways, I guess long story short, if you are a person that is living in fear and you're not sure about your relationship with God or you're not sure about the things of God, anybody will be able to sway you You'll go to church and you'll constantly feeling like you're a sinner. You'll constantly be feeling guilty. You're constantly feeling shame. You're constantly beating yourself. Condemnation is like your best friend. 
it means that you you have lies within yourself that you need to uproot but you're not the one that's uprooting it the holy spirit is so this video i think is specifically for you this video is for anyone that feels like they've been in a place where they're constantly condemning themselves constantly in fear constantly feeling shame constantly feeling guilt right constantly feeling judgment right and you don't know how you're gonna get out of it you don't know how you're gonna um, get to a place where you feel like you're good enough you know God enough you're spiritual enough that's a silly thing though because how can spirit want to be more spiritual than your spirit be make it make sense right and so I share my story today I think I think the reason I'm sharing the story is because there are a lot of times when people pray and there was nothing wrong with the prayer when they prayed it I think the reason why I was actively participating in the deliverance process was because I always loved God I was always I always I've always loved God God has always been so real for me like the things of God has always been so real for me. There was nothing wrong with me that day. I almost feel bad for that girl. Like the, 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 the young man, I almost feel bad for her. There was absolutely nothing wrong with me. My expression with God is so different that in the wrong setting, it can be misinterpreted or misinterpreted. What's misinterpreted? What kind of English are you speaking? Like, what is that? Anyways. When people don't understand how God operates with you and what your expression is, and it's in the wrong environment, in the wrong location sometimes, it will be misinterpreted as if something is wrong with you when there's absolutely nothing wrong with you. And so today, I think I'm being sent to remind you that there's nothing wrong with you. That, that place of condemnation, that place of guilt, and that place of shame that you are at, come out. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. I said there's nothing wrong with you. Come out of that space. Come out of that space. And if you need help, you say, Lord, I need help to come out of this place. I want to come out of this place. I don't want to be in condemnation anymore. I don't want to keep feeling like I'm doing it wrongly. If you're my father, why am I doing it wrong? Like, like, to make it make sense. If your father loves you so much, why would he leave you in condemnation, shame, and guilt? It must be that you are ingesting wrong information. Someone, someone outside of you is feeding you something so wrong that is causing the chaos within you, and that's not God. Whatever you're listening to is not producing peace, love, joy, and freedom. And therefore, that is not kingdom. That can't be Christ. And so today, I come to tell you, there's never been anything wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. And the Spirit of the Lord is saying, come out of that place. There's nothing wrong with you. Don't buy into the divination. That's not God. Come out of that place. You're free. And you're free indeed. I love you.